I'm Steph Hodge with Board Game Geek. Here joining me is Todd from AEG, and we get to look at one of my great favorites of the recent titles called Calico. I'm a big fan already, and I can't wait for you to tell us all about Calico, Todd. Oh, well, thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm very excited about Calico. It has been a big hit for us in a very short time. Uh, you may know it is a partnership between us and Flat Out Games, the makers who yeah. uh, Point Salad, which we had great success with last year, and also Truffle Shuffle that just came out this year. So this is our third release with them, oh, and they wow. are putting out some fantastic games. They really are. Yeah, they just had a successful Kickstarter for Cascadia, I believe. So maybe we'll see that coming from AEG too. So also a great game. I can game. neither confirm so... nor deny that there may <laughs> be some enough. discussion. <laughs> Fair enough. Excellent. So tell us a little bit about Calico. Do you know like how it came to be? Or I know that there's a solo game in here. Yeah. How many people does it play? All that stuff. <laughs> yeah. So Calico is a game about making quilts to attract cats, which is a bit of a departure for us in theme over the years. But uh, we are no longer just killing dragons and orcs these days. We're also doing all sorts of things like <laughs> making beautiful salads and uh, you building- You have Cat Lady, don't you? So, yeah. Yeah, you and have Cat so, Lady, you already like cats. Yeah, we have dipped our toe in the cat world. So this is not a huge, huge departure at this point. But in Calico, what you're doing is you're creating a quilt and it's essentially a color and pattern matching game. As you build different sequences of colors and patterns, that will attract the cats as well as let you play buttons and other things on your quilt. Now, as I mentioned, we had the partnership with Flat Out and they brought us this game and showed it to us as they were taking it to Kickstarter. And we thought it was so good, even on just trying it before then, that we knew we wanted to talk to them about the standard retail uh, distribution of it following the Kickstarter. And we're really, really happy with how it's turned out. Excellent, excellent, yes. Um, so tell us a little bit. It's an abstract tile placement game, right? Yeah, it is at its core. So each player receives a quilt board, as you can see two of them on your screen there. And at the beginning of the game, there's these three little spaces that have little cat heads on them, what they look like, little cat head symbols. And each player is going to have a tile like this, and you've already got them on your board, but they're these little tiles that give you different ways to score in the game. Yes. So, for instance, one of them might have A-A-B-B-C-C, -C, like on my screen here, and that tells you that if you, okay, the one on the right there, A-A-B-B-C-C. -C. So, for instance, if yes. you manage to place tiles around that that are in pairs, either pairs of colors, pairs of patterns, in three different pairs, you're going to score seven points. However, if you also manage to not repeat any of them, so you have three pairs with no repeating patterns or colors, except within the pairs, right? You can have the same color right. and the same one within, you'll score the 11 points, you'll get the bonus. So you can do it either way. So for instance, you could have uh, two different patterns that both had blue in that pattern in them, and you wouldn't be able to get the total bonus unless you also managed to have no blue repeating, except in the color ones, so. Yeah, basically you're trying you're trying to get pairs of colors. So two, two, and two, like two blue, pink, and yellow, and then also two different patterns in three types. But those patterns right. can be spread up amongst you don't have to have two of the exact same blue tile. You just need to have that pattern twice. It's a little mm -hmm. tricky, but if you see it, you'll you'll know what we're talking about. <laughs> It's a little tricky, yeah, and you'll have different ones each game, and you don't have to complete them. Again, they're just one of the several methods of scoring in the game, um, exactly. because there will come situations where you won't necessarily be able to. You're going to be stuck to where you have to play a color. It's going to not allow you to finish that, and you just have to strategize and decide. You know, I've often found that it's good to go ahead and pick one to be sort of the sacrificial one there, and I'm like, okay, I'm not doing this one. This is going to be my holding spot for getting, uh, like maybe working on buttons or cats, which I'll explain in a minute, but uh, it, it gives you a bit of freedom if you choose which ones you're going to focus on and which ones you're not. Absolutely, absolutely. But it's good to have, you know, starting goals to work towards. Absolutely. 
And of course, as you play along in the game, you're also going to uh, be able to score extra points in different ways. So for instance, anytime you have three of the same color in a grouping touching, and that includes the edge spots on your board. So if you'll notice, there are spots along the edge that are already in colors. Those can count toward it too. So when you have three that are touching, you're gonna to get to place the corresponding button, which are these little uh, button tiles on that group. Each button you place is gonna be worth three points at the end of the game. Now, should that group get bigger, that doesn't mean you get to add more buttons. Like once it's had three and gotten the button, that's all. Now, if you had two blue spots, each of which had a button, and then later they became connected by another one, you'd still get to keep both of those. But you can't uh, just add three more to an existing one and get to continue to add those. And finally, are the cats. So if you notice there at the top, there are three cats laid out and there's many, many cats in the game with different scoring methods. These are the cats we use generally in the beginner's version of the game because they're very simple. If you notice Millie on the left there, she likes the, uh, on your screen, she likes polka dots and she likes ferns. So at any time, and you notice she's got a plus three above that. So if at any time you have three ferns or three polka dots all together, Millie will be attracted to that. And you can take one of the Millie tokens and put her on your board. And that's gonna get you three points at the end of the game. Now you'll also notice that there are two more cats, one of which likes groups of four and one of which likes groups of five. So they're a little harder to complete, but they're also gonna be more points at the end of the game. And if you'll take Millie and flip her over real quick to show the viewers at home, you'll notice there's other cats. So for instance, this is Callie. Callie just wants three, but wants them arranged exactly like that with um, two and three in sort of that triangle shape. Whereas Millie on the other side doesn't care if they're in a straight line or in any other formation, she just wants three. And so it's different ways and variety you can play the game. Excellent. So um, I think we should probably play a few rounds or have Lincoln do a quick few rounds so we can see how it plays out a little bit. Absolutely. So yeah, you got so, all this cleared and you got it all set up. So on the first turn, you're gonna have your Calico bag, which has all of your little tiles in it. And you're gonna have three on the <laughs> table that are already set out. Yep. And then each player yep. is gonna draw two from the bag. Looks like he already has top. two, maybe. Yep, they've okay. already got two. So what you're gonna do on your yeah. turn is you're gonna choose one of those two to play somewhere on your board in an attempt to begin setting up your strategy and your scoring. Okay, so place that one there. Once you play that, you're going to go ahead and choose one of the three that's on the table to add to your hand for future turns. All right, then you're gonna take another one out of the bag and place it out there for the other players. And then that's essentially your turn. Play now moves on to the next player who's gonna look at their plans and begin to play like that. Nice. And then another one comes out of the bag. Ooh, that's a good one. It goes right next to your other fern. Mm-hmm. Yep, and that's the right choice to take that fern for a future turn. So that gets you a yellow button. Right, and so you go over does to does it get button. you a Millie cat? Let's see, Millie, let's look at the, what are the designs on those? I'm trying to look close and see. I think they're all Is that fern. All fern? If that's yeah. all, yes, that's all fern. So Millie likes that too. So you get a button nice. and Millie. So that's going to be six points right off the bat. Boom. Board. Perfect. Then you draft Perfect. a new tile. Right. <laughs> and you're setting yourself up really well for that AABBCC tile because you already have two yellow and two pattern of the same type. So you just need two other colors and two other patterns. <laughs> and what's really neat about it is if you notice because of the space on the board, you've got uh, overlap between all of those different ones sort of overlap each other. And those points in between are where it becomes really dicey because you have to 
make certain you're putting the right one in between them to be able to finish both patterns if you're going for it. So you get a pink button. Yeah, very good. And as y'all play through, one thing I'll mention in the rule book, there are a set of achievements for playing over multiple games. There's also rules for solo play and you can play through that and try to earn your way up all the way from budding quilter to calico quilt master if you <laughs> are good enough at the game. And there's also an easy version where you actually don't have those pattern building tiles in the middle, which just let people sort of free form how they're gonna build it and go mm. for buttons and cats instead, uh, which can make it easier on younger players as well. Yeah, sure. No, I, I actually have played a few of the scenarios and they are quite a challenge and I love that. I really do. I think that's a really cool addition that you have. And every and you can even play it just not as solo, but you could play it as a regular game too, just to see who can like do it. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so that's a really cool. That's feature. one thing I really appreciate about their design is that they put a lot of thought into that to give a lot of replay value. So there's a lot of mileage coming in that box. Yep. Looks like you got a blue button there, Lincoln, if you want it. Oh yeah, there's a really cool bonus. If you get all six color buttons, you get the rainbow bonus, which is obviously my favorite. <laughs> That'll give you another uh, another three points on top of all that you've exactly. already earned. Yes, I love that. Like gives you one more thing to go for. <laughs> You're trying to get the, the combos with the patterns and you're trying to get the for the cats and you're trying to get the combos with the colors and work on your little objectives in the middle. There's like three or four different things you're going for at the same time. It's like fantastic. <laughs> it's almost like flat out created another point salad in a way <laughs> because it's very much that type of game. <laughs> Yeah, this is true. Though I think this one's a little bit more thinky. I feel like the whole game, I'm just like, what do I do next? What, sh what should I draft? Where should I play this? What's, you know? And, but point salad, you kind of have to be on your feet and kind of like grab those, you know, those veggies as soon as you see them that you know you need them or that cool point card that obviously works really well with what you're doing. And so I, both very great though. <laughs> it, it is a bit more thinky because I do find that when you begin to play the game seriously, if you're really trying to compete against other players, you'll notice that you have to take tiles that you may not be intending to use for several turns down the road because there's a very good chance you won't see that one again. And if you need that purple polka dot one, or you know you're going to in order to finish one of your patterns, you better grab it while it's there, even if it means exactly. uh, playing around with other colors in the meantime. Or if you like to be that kind of player when you're playing with a lot of people or many people, you say, oh, Steph needs that tile. I'm going to take it from her. <laughs> well, that does happen. Toward the end of the game, you will hear some more groans when certain tiles are taken. Yes. <laughs> a little more complaint about that sort of thing. <laughs> um, in the chat, there's a lot of love for the Beth Sobel art. Do you, do you want to touch on that a little bit? Oh, yeah, she did a fantastic job. So like I say, it, it is, it's just a cute game, right? And it has a really cute theme. And she did such a good job illustrating these cats. And what's funny is when you go into the rule book, another thing you'll notice uh, is there's an entire page dedicated to meeting the cats. The cats. The real cats. I know. That are, every one of these <laughs> is an actual cat that belonged to somebody that made it into the game. And she lovingly illustrated them all. Um, and just did a fantastic job. Yeah, some of them were like actually Kickstarter re level rewards. So that's like really cool. Mm -hmm. The players were able to get, uh, you know, their uh, own cats in there for backing it. And um, <laughs> there were some special cats on the Kickstarter um, that I believe we are going to be able to have available um, in the future. Uh, for people who weren't on the Kickstarter originally that will be able to get those. Um, I don't have the full info on that yet, but it should be coming pretty soon. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And so obviously this is a brand new game. 
uh, and you're already sold out. So there will be another print run for sure. Uh, do you know of any other oh, yeah. like expansions <laughs> or anything you could you can tell us about? Like, is there more content coming for it since it's been doing so well? Well, so we definitely are getting another print run going. We we went back to hit that button as fast as we could, but it turns out we we're not going to be able to get any more until after the new year. So what's out there in the channel is what's going to be for Christmas. So if you want it for the holidays, uh, you need to grab it up. Now, there, there are still copies available. I mean, it's not sold out entirely at the retail level, but we just don't have any okay. more to send through once this is gone. But after the new year, we will. As far as additional content goes, it's funny because this is one of those games that we're not necessarily looking at creating expansions for. Um, it's a game that is pretty complete as it is. We feel very good about it. We think it's a game that's gonna continue to attract people and draw in people. And we're just gonna continue to uh, promote it and put it out there and uh, hope that more people will start making quilts. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um... Looks like Lincoln's doing very well. He got his bonus over there on the right-hand side. He's working oh, on he's his bonus cry. on the left side. Yeah, he needs another purple is oh, what he man. needs. Ah, there you go. Well, there you go. That's seven points right there. Yep. Yeah. Oh, you really know, if he gets a here. few more patterns lined up, he's got some more kittens on his way. He's coming. <laughs> going to get some more kittens. <laughs> um. So he's, he won't be getting that top bonus uh, with the not equals, uh, but he still can on the right side. Yeah, on the right side he can. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I love figuring out all, all the puzzle <laughs> filling in the board. It's so much fun. <laughs> oh, and that's exactly what it is. And you have to adapt to it because you don't know what pieces you're going to get from turn to turn. And uh, just being able to work on one side of the board and then suddenly shift and work on the other one for a little while because of what's coming your way uh, can really yeah. be a bit of a brain burner. Yeah, and Lincoln actually has a light blue button on the other board on the left side that he can grab and a green button on the right board that he can grab. Yep. Look at that. Bada bing, bada boom. And if you can get one more of those like floral kind of patterns on the left, you can get that seven coconut cat right about in there, which would be really great. If one of those showed up. Right. Yep. That's the thing. If it shows up, if it chooses to grace <laughs> you with its presence. Exactly. <laughs> that's always my like ah oh. <laughs> but when you're playing solo um there there's a mechanic where uh, a tile slides out every round so you grab one and one slides out so you will be filling in two spots so it's kind of like two players are playing mm -hmm. it's to give that Which automated nice. feel that there is someone out there denying you things yeah 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 that's that's for sure um we can we can keep uh we can keep letting Lincoln play play along, but I know that you had some other uh, releases and and mentions you wanted to shout out to us and tell us about. So we'll keep watching yeah, Lincoln absolutely. from afar. But <laughs> uh, I will say that Calico is available to customers in Europe right now as part of Spiel Digital. They can uh, order it through that right now, and I hope they will. And I'll go ahead and say a few of the others that are available. I mentioned Truffle Shuffle earlier which is another game that we've done with Flat Out. Uh, Travel Shuffle is a card drafting game where you're drafting uh, chocolates and truffles in order to build sets of values and colors to score points. That's oh, yeah, that, that artwork makes you hungry. <laughs> it makes you want all the chop. You want to eat chocolates as you play that. Yes, and it looks really good. The fun part, too, is if you actually pay attention to the chocolates, the little design patterns on them of the uh, colors and the stripes and stuff correspond to their number. So you can actually see what number they are by looking at the chocolate as well. So um, that's available. All these I'm showing you are available through Spiel Digital as well, even though some of them are still on their way to standard release. Um, we also have Tiny Towns Villagers. This oh, is the next. cool the next in the Tiny Towns line. And in Villagers, I'll open this up and I'll hold it up to the camera. You have little critter villagers coming to 
visit your town. So for instance, you have little squirrels coming to visit, <laughs> um, little mice. Uh, there's some birds and some others as well. And the way that they function in the game is that at the beginning of the game, you're going to draw a card, and there's several that will tell you what the villagers do in this game. So, um, for instance, in Innovate, if, you have two, if you've gotten two villagers in your town, and there's rules for attracting them to your town, it would let you construct a building with any unique resources in the current shape. So even if you don't have Ooh. quite the correct ones, as long as they don't match any of the others in the shape, you can still build what you're trying to build. And of course it comes oh, with, cool. you know, many new building cards as usual, you know, all different kinds of strategies and patterns and new things, ways to score. And that wow. is available as well. And of course, Yeah, so lastly, that sounds like if, if yeah, if if, uh, if you already love Tiny Towns, and that just sounds like it, more extra content is always great, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. And we just finished our 151st live stream uh, of playing Tiny oh, Towns wow. during the day. And uh, we did mix it up. We did play Space Base and some other games with people at home, too. But we, we did the 151st episode. Uh, you can go back and find those on YouTube and play along if you're at home. And we are currently on break until after the new year. We're going to come back with season two with some more new games that we've, we've created alternate rule sets for so that we can play over Zoom uh, so people at home can play along with us. And we're, we're going through our catalog of games right now and tasking people with figuring out, okay, how do you play this game over Zoom with people? And they're coming up with really neat, the, the rules for Space Base they came up with were really, really cool. Uh, they called it the Dysomatic AI, but it lets everyone at home play Space Base together. So it's really, really fun. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah, I noticed and, that you uh, guys were, were on air a lot. So definitely check out their Facebook and like, uh, I think you guys are on Twitch too. I, I feel like you guys are you everywhere. So you're always going Twitch live. So. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you'll be able to, you can find all those old episodes and uh, hopefully that'll hold you over until January when we come back with new stuff. And then Absolutely. lastly, of course, I'd be remiss not oh, to yeah. mention Mariposas by Elizabeth Hargrave, which is also available through Spiel Digital. Um, her new game of butterflies and butterfly migration, uh, which we're super excited about. It's been a big hit for us. Um, we're just thrilled with how well this game has gone over since it released back in August. Yeah, no, it's, it's a fantastic game. And that also is beautiful artwork and um, it's a fun gameplay. So it makes sense that it's doing so well. Uh, I'm very happy that all your games are, you know, doing as well as they are because they are great and they should be. So um, looks like Lincoln's almost filled up the board for Calico, which is very impressive for both for both <laughs> players. <laughs> um, but Lincoln A and Lincoln B. Yeah. <laughs> Lincoln A. <laughs> Um, no, yeah. So uh, be on the lookout for uh, Calico in your local stores. Uh, and uh, when there's a reprint, <laughs> grab it. <laughs> <laughs> or if you're in uh, Europe, you could grab it on the Spiel, which is excellent. Yep, you can order right now today. So get those orders in before the, the convention wraps up. <laughs> Lincoln got a lot of cats on that one board on the left. That's impressive, Lincoln. Nicely done. Yeah. <laughs> That board on the left is looking pretty good. I'm thinking it may, may be the winner, but we'll see in a sure minute. Sure does look like maybe, it. Maybe, yeah, maybe the winner. Um, so there's also one question, is Calico available in German or other languages? I believe it, yes. it will be coming. Um, it is not currently available in those languages, but it is coming. We are uh, working with our partners to bring it out in, in many, many various languages. Excellent, excellent. And so uh, just to wrap up this Calico a little bit, um, I wanted just to, to say what we score for at the end. We could just talk about like everything that, you can go down the checklist if you want. <laughs> sure, so first off, you can of course check the three scoring methods that were out at the beginning of the game, your patterns that you build around on your board. You can look at those and see if you completed those and what points you get for those. Uh, you can then of course look at your cats, 
that you've attracted to your board and see how much each one of those was worth and add those up. Then you can check your buttons and see how many you scored in buttons. Yeah, and then, then the high score will win. Or if you are playing against the scenario modes, make sure you got all the check marks for every condition and see if you win. The particular quilt you were trying to, to sew, correct? Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Well, I think that, that about wraps up our time. I just want to make sure, is there anything else that we're missing, Todd? Because you guys have a lot of awesome games coming out. and. <laughs> Well, um, no, I, I think that's about everything, of course. Um, oh, I do want to mention, of course, our partnership with the op, uh, Smash Up Marvel, will be coming out uh, very soon in the next few months. Uh, we're really excited about that. It was super fun to get to work with uh, the Sinister Six and the Avengers and everybody on that side. So uh, we're really excited about it. it. It meshes incredibly well with Smash Up. So you can have zombie Avengers and Hydra kitty cats and uh, you name it. That sounds amazing. That That's really cool to hear. Um, we'll look forward to that one when it comes out. Um, thank you so much, Todd, for joining us today at Spiel Digital. Last final day. But doesn't mean the games aren't any worse because they are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Saving the best for last, right? That's the idea. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, thank you, Steph. And thank you, Lincoln, for uh, playing through the game for Good us. Demo. Yeah, great job, Lincoln. <laughs> Bye.